We're now in our PathNode script, and in this script we're going to look at adding some additional functionality to it. We're going to just build this out a little bit more so that it has a little more value to, uh, to the game and to the Goomba and to its behaviors. So currently it's set up pretty simple. That, that node changes the path instruction as to whether or not it's going to move left, move right, stop, or jump in the air. So when it triggers that object, the only thing that really happens is it just changes the state of the Goomba. But we could do a lot more with this. This is where we want to look at and help you know, design components that are a little more full, a little more um, useful during game development. So for us, how could we make this a little bit more full? Well, if we're trying to think for design-wise, what we could do is we could actually use this to override the speed of the player. We could use this to override the jumping or the jump height of a player. We could also um, use a counter on this so that every time we trigger it we actually count down how many times this trigger actually gets used before it changes to something else or before it gets removed from the environment. So if we were to add things like that into our component we're going to need some additional variables. So let's go ahead and go in and say let's start with uh, jumping. We'll say let's add some jumping to it. So we'll do can let's do a boolean that's just simply checking for can we do a uh, jump override so that we can change it so we'll do override jump and we'll make this a boolean and we'll set this one initially to false and then if we do override the jump, then what, what's the height going to be? So let's go ahead and say that we can change up each one of these and we'll set that to a lowercase r. Each one of these could change the actual jump height as he goes through. So we could have one, two, three, four, five, or a hundred little blocks that constantly change how high this guy could jump as he's coming through. Um, so we'll do a jump override, we'll make this just a float variable and let's set its initial value to something kind of noticeable. We'll say 8.0. And then the next thing we could do is we could actually um, have a counter that counts down that we actually change the current um, state, the path instruction, to a different path instruction. So let's do a change path instruction to it's a nice big word for us to use in instruction 2. And if we do path instruction 2, this is simply just a boolean, we're going to just say, you know, is this a feature, is this a function of our component that we actually want to use? And we'll say currently, no, it's not. But if it was, we're going to need enumeration to change it to. So we'll do an enumeration change to. And inside of that, we're going to set up basically the same thing we have above. Move left, right, stop. Or we can even add one that says to remove a trigger so that we could get rid of the trigger that's inside of the scene. So let's do move left. Move right, move stop, and let's say jump air, and then our additional one here is going to be a remove trigger. Okay, so we've got the enumeration set up. Let's go ahead and set that one to the initial value. We'll do a change to make that equal to our change to dot. And what do we want to set the initial value to? Oh, we'll set it to right. And then we're going to need some sort of trigger to count down because we simply want to count down. Um, as the object goes through 
that we've hit it and we're counting down that trigger and then when it reaches a certain point then we can change it to something else. So we'll set up a variable and we'll do a trigger countdown. This is just going to be an integer and we can set a default value to 2. So the basic variables that we're going to need, let's go ahead and take a peek back at our onTriggerEnter function and how we've got it set up. Right now we're, we're doing right by simply checking is it the enemy. That way when he's going back and forth, if he's supposed to be doing a countdown with it, it is triggering, it's triggered by the correct thing. Um, we are printing initially just to make sure that the trigger was working for us. We can go ahead and get rid of that one. And what we want to do is we're going to check for what? Well, we do have some boolean statements up here. Can we change the path instructions? Well, let's go ahead and check for that and make sure that that's a true or false. So we can say if change path instructions and we'll say if that's true then what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to check for something else because not only checking for the path instruction but we're also going to check for well, where's the trigger countdown? Have we reached zero? So if we can change the path instruction if our trigger countdown is at least less than or equal to zero and then we also want to check for something else inside of here we're going to be saying well if change to and we've got our change to is equal to change to dot remove because we do have our remove one then we do want to be able to just destroy that object so let's go ahead and set that up to say if change to is equal to to remove trigger then we are going to go in and say destroy and what are we going to destroy? the game object now if it's not set to the trigger then it's going to be meaning that it's got to be one of these four and then what are we going to do at that point? Well, else we need to set it up for one of those. So let's say else, let's do a path instruction equals, and what we want to make path instruction equal to is our change to. Now can we do that? Well, let's give it a shot. If we come down and say our path instruction is equal to our change to, then this is going to simply make this the value of the change to that we've set. Now after that one, if we kind of just keep following this down, we've got the if, we've got the if the counter is less than zero. If the counter is not less than zero, then what do we want to do? Well, then we simply want to go in and we want to reduce the trigger count. And we'll do a trigger countdown minus minus just to subtract one from our trigger countdown each time. And then that next one on down, we've got if the change path instruction to is true, if it's true, do this. If it's not, then we are simply just leaving it with what we have set up up here. So we really don't need to mess with the else statement 
down here. But we do have an opportunity to squeeze in in between our uh, checking for the enemy. We could check for one additional thing. We could check for if we have remove on trigger. And for remove on trigger, we could simply just remove the trigger the first time through. So we have kind of that set up right in here. We're removing the trigger right in here, but we could also have it so that as the Goomba just walks through, it simply removes that trigger for us. So let's say we want to remove the trigger. RDMLV remove trigger. Now, if we're going to remove it when it triggers, we're simply going to be saying what? Just destroy game object. Okay, and the remove on trigger, this is just going to be another option that we can set up here. And a boolean. And we'll set it to false initially. And that is going to give us another chance to just add more control over these um, game objects and these little trigger boxes so that when the Scoomba goes through, we could have him performing the action and then removing uh, that game object. So when he comes back through, perhaps, he's not repeating an action. It's just sort of a one-time event that you want to happen. Okay, so that gets us through checking for the tag, checking for... Are we going to actually change the pathing instruction? If we are, have we met the countdown that we want to meet? If we have met that countdown, then we're going to change. Um, if the change is equal to remove trigger, we're going to get rid of it. If it's not, then we're simply going to set the path instruction to the change to instruction. And then else, we simply reduce the countdown. And then outside of that, we're checking for an additional remove on trigger boolean option and if it's set then we simply remove that game object now will all of this work maybe let's take a peek see what happens so we'll save this out and we can go over to unity and we've got a couple of errors one is the right is not a member of change two and cannot convert type so if we're looking at those 13 and 25 the first one is a simple easy fix. We just need to change this one to a move right. And let's get that one cleared up. And let's take a peek at this one. It's saying cannot convert system.type to path instruction. So we're trying to make these two equal, and it doesn't quite let us make those equal. So what's a simple little workaround? Well, if we're looking back up here, our change two is really just set to an integer. So what we could do is keep this simple for us. We're just going to go in and say, let's make a private variable. A private variable, and this private variable, we'll just set this one to a get change to. And we're going to make this just an integer. All right, let's see if we can't get that one set up just the way we want it. There we go. Now, because we're setting this just to an integer value, we're going to simply just store a value in that that represents the change to. So we'll go back down to our else. And let's just modify this just a little bit. We'll say our get change to equals our change to. That way it's storing the integer value that the enumeration is set to. And then our path instruction is simply going to be equal to our get change to. Let's take just a minute, make those little adjustments for it. That's going to clear up our errors in here. And what we can do next is go on up here. And if we hit play, 
what are we going to get with this? Well, let's take a peek at our path node and see what options we have available to us. Um, we've got our counter, the trigger counter countdown, which is two. We have our path instruction, so this is our initial path instruction. When he gets here, he's going to go back to the right. And then we have our jump override, we've got a change path instruction. So if we check the change path instruction, we've got the trigger countdown to two. He's going to have to hit this twice. And what we can do is say, well, it's going to change to, let's say, a stop. So that way, once he's gone to that twice, he'll then just simply stop. But to make this a little more effective, let's make another path node. And let's set this path node up on this side. And on this side, we're not going to have any pathing changing on the instruction, but we're simply going to send him back to the left. That way, at the end of the day, we've got him going back and forth between those two points. Once this one counts down past two, Then he'll stop in his tracks. So let's give it a try, see what happens. We'll move Mario a little out of the way. So he goes, he hit the trigger, it sent him back over to the right, he'll hit this trigger, he'll send him back over to the left. And you see how we're just using these to control what direction he goes in. And you notice that our trigger countdown has counted down to zero. So the next time we go through this point, then our change to instructional would be stop. There we go. And we've got our Goomba stopping after our countdown for that a trigger event was set to zero. So here we've created a nice way to control some of the logic while we design um, our Goomba's pathing and where he's going to go and what he's going to do. Now let's try a couple of the other things that we have set up in here. We'll just do sort of a one shot with this one. We'll just go in, select on one of the path nodes, and in here, let's do a remove on trigger. And if we hit play, actually we'll go ahead and take the, uh, the counter and the change path instruction off. So it's just the remove. Now you'll notice that we have a path instruction for move right. But when we get to that point, we remove it, and it pushes him back over to the right. There we go. So at this point, it looks like the trigger works pretty good. The one thing we do have to be careful of, though, is that inside of our script, we are destroying that object right away. So our best bet, just in case we don't run into any errors on this one, is to actually give a little bit of a... a, a timer to count down before we actually destroy it. So let's go ahead and do like a, a remove time countdown. We'll add an additional variable up here. And on this one we'll just do a float. And let's make our initial value equal something not too long. We'll just do 1.0. And we'll drop that in there. So let's try that one one more time. There we go. So that we have a little bit of control on that just in case we need it. All right, so we have our destroying working fine for us. The thing that we haven't quite checked yet was if we're supposed to change to a remove trigger after a trigger count. So let's go back in here and check that one out. Make sure that it does function. We'll bump our trigger count down to one. We've got our remove on trigger. We'll uncheck that one. But we're going to set our change path instruction and our change to remove trigger. So let's hit play on that one. He's going to go to the trigger, back to our other trigger, and then this time around we've got our countdown to zero, 
We'll remove the trigger. There we go. So some nice, fun control right in there without too much effort inside of our path node, just enough to let us do some fun things. Now the things that we haven't quite tied back into is our jump. So we have a jump, but we're not really doing anything with it. So in order to do something with it, we do need to go back into our enemy Goomba. And you can see in here where we're simply checking for the state. And what is that state, and will he jump? Yes, he can jump, but if we want to incorporate the override to it, then we need to actually call into that and then use that variable. So let's set up a conditional for this one. We'll say if linked path node dot override our jump. So if we've got that, what do we want to do with it? Well, we can say our jump speed equals, equals what? Well, a linked path dot. And what is that jump? That is our override jump. If we look back over the path, or our jump override. There we go. Let's say we save that one out. Let's go back over. And we're looking pretty good, so let's go ahead and set up our path node. And what we want to do is we simply want to take our pathing instruction. We'll say we're going to jump in the air. And the override puts us at 8 just to make sure that we're actually high enough to see the actual effect. Now we are getting some issues right in here, so let's take a peek at what's going on in here. So it's saying the object reference is not set to an instance of the object. So we need to make an instance of the object in order to use it. And we'll go back over to here. And we can see that with our if linked path node override jump. So let's set that one up so that we can use that just right. And to do that, we simply need to make sure we are in the right spot of our conditional. Let's make sure that we've got it set up right. We were actually outside of our initial setup, which didn't allow us to use our instance that we had set here. There we go. Let's save that one out. Let's go back in. And let's give that a try. Let's move Mr. Mario over a little bit. And over to the right, we should see him jump. There we go. All the way off. We'll go ahead and set it up on this side as well. We can do jump in the air. And we'll hit play. And we'll actually do something a little fun. We'll go ahead and just take control of the object. We can see that he's jumping, jumping, jumping. Now, what happened was it set his state to jump. Now, that kind of created an error for us because we weren't able to change the state back to what it was after it, or before it. We were changing the state, and now what we need to do is be able to go back and say, well, he's jumping, now let's put him back into his, uh, his, his original state or check for that current state. And we'll look at that next.